Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode two of five on light. It's all around us all the time. And make sure that you check out yesterday's episode where we talked about how it affects us and affects plants and animals and the things around us. But today we're gonna talk about what it even is. What is this stuff? It's literally hitting me in the face right now. But what is it? Before Einstein's theories in 1905, which described the relativity of motion, you know, his theories of relativity, people believed that light waves had to travel through a medium. The medium was called the ether, and it was supposed to be less tangible than air, but was somehow everywhere in the universe. Sounds a lot like the force, right? It was just this thing that no one could see or touch or whatever, but it was everywhere. Einstein fixed all that, and he was all like, nah, bro, light is a photon or stream of particles, and they can move through a vacuum at fixed speed, which we'll come back to. But later that year, he was adding to his theories. He added special relativity, which said that light wasn't just a stream of particles. It was also a continuous field of waves. So which is it? Is light a particle or is light a wave? Is light a photon or is light part of the electromagnetic spectrum? It's both. And let me explain how that works. Put your thinking pants on, because this is big. Light is the smallest quantity of energy that can be transported. It's just this little pinprick of energy. It's, a, it's considered a photon. It's a particle, but it has no mass. It can't be split. It doesn't decay. It's just this little thing called a photon. But light is also a wave, so it behaves like a wave would behave. It reflects in the same way, it diffracts in the same way. So if you put a flashlight up, it would cause a shadow behind your hand. It refracts in the same manner that other waves refract. So it's actually both. It is a photon, it is this particle without mass, but it is also a wave on the electromagnetic spectrum, and that is called the wave-particle duality. It is both at the same time, and it cannot be split from either. Depending on the experiment you use, light will act as a photon or act as a wave, but it has never been observed to act as both at the same time. Because of wave-particle or particle-wave duality, light is considered both because it's a photon propagating through space as an electromagnetic wave. Now, this sounds complicated, but if you're following me so far, great, because we're about to go crazy. If you aren't, Rewind a little bit and listen to that again. Hopefully you'll get it. In 1801, Thomas Young created something called the double slit experiment. And this is very complicated, but it's super cool. And we've tried to make it as simple as possible. So hopefully we all get it. It works this way. Let's say I have a photon flashlight. It only shoots one photon at a time, just one. It can shoot you know, a bunch of them in a row, but it's just one at a time. On the other side of the room that I'm standing in, there is a wall. We observe the wall to see how the photon behaves. You know, if I shoot it out in the empty room, it hits the wall, simple. Now, in between, in the middle of the room, I put another wall. And in the middle of that wall, I make a vertical line, which we'll call a slit. When we point the photon flashlight at the slit and we shoot it, it shows up as a slit on the far wall. No problem, right? Makes sense. You shoot a photon at a hole in a wall, it goes through the hole, no big deal. Okay, so we're still standing in this room, and we swap out the wall with one slit, and we put in two slits, two little vertical lines. When we point the same photon flashlight in the same spot, and we point it at this new middle wall, and we shoot it on the far wall, something called a diffraction pattern shows up. Basically, a big mess of light in the middle of the wall shows up, and how can that happen? When we did the first one, it just showed up as a slit on the far wall, easy. But now that there are two slits, we see that light is behaving as a wave. It's going through both slits. How can it do that? We're not moving the flashlight. This is crazy. Turns out light is also a wave. So photons are rippling through the slits. The first photon might go through slit number one. The second photon might go through slit number two. They're all going to kind of turn into a big mess on the other side. And over time, it's going to form this big pattern. Inevitably, with two slits, you can show that the particle is going through both spots. Scientists were all like, this makes no sense. What is happening? They fired particles one at a time through the slits. The same wave refraction pattern showed up. 
They installed a detector which would watch over the slits to see what was passing through them, and the detector would watch to make sure that particles weren't like magically transporting from one place to another. They were just flying through slits normally. When they turned on the detector, the light behaved as particles. 93% of the time. They left on the detector and they stopped collecting data and then the particle started hitting the far wall as a wave. So when they had the detector on, they could only detect things going through one slit. When they weren't looking at what the detector was doing, it was going through both slits again. It's like light decides how to act based on who's watching it. And that's exactly how kind of Einstein says it works. I can't explain why this is. It would take somebody way smarter than me, and scientists still haven't entirely figured this out 100%. But science describes the world around us. That's what it does. It describes it. It doesn't necessarily say why things happen, but it describes how it happens. And Einstein wasn't like out there making jokes. The idea of particle wave duality in the case of relativity means that since it's always doing both at the same time, we can expect that light will be what it needs to be for that experiment. It's not the hero we deserve, but it's the hero that we have kind of a thing. You know, no matter what we're doing, if we need it to be a wave, light will be a wave. If we need it to be a particle, light will be a particle, because it's both. But to bring it all back, by embracing wave-particle duality, regular physics starts butting up against quantum physics. This is the cutting edge of light. And quantum physics, that's a whole different animal. Things at the quantum level, they don't behave like you and me. They have a whole new type of physics that governs their universe. So when we started to spot this strange difference in how these particles worked, we realized there's more to physics than just the standard models. The central concept of quantum mechanics is the inability of concepts like particle and concepts like wave to fully describe the behavior of quantum scale objects, which is extremely exciting to physicists. This is so cool, and the double slit experiment shows the basic idea of quantum mechanics, which says that an observer can view phenomena in one way or another way but not both simultaneously, which is why it's so hard to study. Light can be two things at once, but only one if we're looking at it. So cool. But light may just be about perception. Maybe it's not the light that's weird. Maybe it's us. And for more on that, we're going to come back tomorrow and talk about how we perceive light. Let us know down in the comments if you got the double slit experiment or if you have other resources to help us all understand it a bit better, share it with us down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe right here on the screen. You can click on it so you get all of our episodes here on YouTube. And thanks so much for watching Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. See you tomorrow.